Thanks for staying with us on The Real Story. Improving child care in our state and across the country from the actual cost to the care. All ideas were on the table in Washington recently for the White House's Child Care Summit. Representative Mary Wielander was there representing our state. She's on the Children and Education Committees in our General Assembly and is back from the nation's capital. Now here in studio with us to tell us about the trip and all of the ideas that were discussed. Welcome back on The Real Story. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so last week you went to the White House for this Child Care Summit. Yes. Tell us about who it involved and who was there. Sure. Uh, so this was a, a state's convening that the White House called and there were about 90 other representatives and senators from states around the country, um, some as far as Alaska and Hawaii, all there for the sole purpose of discussing the ways that we can improve child care within our own states and across the country. And so you all were sitting giving ideas, mm -hmm. providing feedback, so I would assume that you heard some, some good ones um, there. What were some of the key things that stuck out to you? There were a number of different proposals that some other states were looking at. Um, so for example, New Mexico just instituted universal pre-K mm. for everyone, every child in the state. Um, and I think that is absolutely amazing. Um, there were a couple other proposals that looked at the different subsidies that we could offer to child care providers um, so that their children could actually go to daycare at a lower cost um, or an early childhood uh, center. So there were some things that were we're definitely going to be looking at and seeing what we can do and to implement them in our state. Mm -hmm. There were some other examples of how Connecticut actually has taken some really important steps already um, that they do not have. Okay, so. interesting. Highlight some of those. And I know that mm -hmm. you all worked on it last legislative yes. session. It's been a continuous work, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, and I'm only in my third year, and so there have been some other representatives who have been working on this for a lot longer. But I think it's great that we're actually finally starting to pay attention to this issue. It has often been sort of ignored mm -hmm. um, because it was impacting a group of people that don't often get to um, have a lot of attention on them, which is usually moms mm -hmm. and women of color and that are needing these services, but also are the providers. So the fact that we're starting to pay attention to it is really great. But one thing that we have in Connecticut that a lot of places didn't have was an agency devoted to children or an agency devoted to early childhood education. So. Commissioner Beth Bai was brought up by a number of people as being an amazing advocate for kids in our state. Um, and to see that we have something like birth to three in place that places other states did not have. And so there are a lot of kids who need services that are falling through the cracks there. Um, right, it's so important, early intervention, when a key. child, you notice that they might have some developmental issues, mm -hmm. is so, so important. It's very sure. key, yes. And, you know, I mean, it's so interesting. And as a, a, a mom who has young kids <laughs> in this age range, I mean, it's really tough out there. And yes. uh, what do you think, uh, so we obviously know what Connecticut is doing well. Mm -hmm. What were some of the universal problems that you were when you were like, wow, that's exactly what we're going through in Connecticut? Yeah. Obviously, cost and number of child care providers. I mean, I have someone I know who can't even find mm -hmm. a spot until next spring, and she yes. wants to get back into the workforce. It was really interesting because we were coming from so many different places, but the universal issues were, were they were there across the board, mm -hmm. no matter what kind of, uh, whether it's South Dakota, right. Florida, California, um, or Connecticut. And so we were focusing on the main issues that seem to be impacting everyone, which is access, finding spots, um, workforce development, having teachers and, and care providers actually be available, the cost, because it's just, it's going up more and more, and it is, um, right now, we have people who their mortgage or their rent plus all their utilities is still less mm -hmm. than what it costs to put one child into daycare. And so those were the main things that we were looking at. And what we're going to be trying to do is think a little bit outside the box, um, but also try to borrow some ideas from other states so we have something that is actually based on common sense and can be implemented easily. Yeah. So are there specific things that you're going to work on then next legislative mm -hmm. session that you're like, this is it? Like, what yes. are some of those things that you have looked at and said, we, we need to get on this? One of the proposals that we had this past le legislative session that I'm going to be working on again directly, I introduced it, is the idea of a state-run flex account for 
childcare expenses. Right now, you have to rely on whether or not your employer has that as an option. So this would allow for individuals, small businesses to participate in something that can save them money, that can put aside funds um, so before taxes. Mm -hmm. That was deemed illegal on a federal level because it violated some federal law. The White House was not able to give me an answer yesterday or this past week when we were there um, about what exactly the problem was, but we have convened a working group and we're going to be looking at how can we implement that. Like the states, you've yes. the state has convened, yep. and the White House wasn't able to point that out. Did they no. know what you were talking about, or they were like, yes, but we don't know exactly? No, they were pretty confused. So we're going to go back and look at some of the information that we got on yeah. a state level and see, you know, what exactly is the problem because mm -hmm. we should be able to run that through the Comptroller or the Treasurer's Office. So right. it's not something that is excluding a lot of people. Right. And I think the more we can do to to make our state attractive to parents and families, the better we will be in the long run. Yeah, and that's kind of an easier solution anyways, and not necessarily taking money mm -hmm. out of people's pockets. It's right. just, a, yeah, making a tax. Well, I guess eventually it could be because the taxpayer ends up paying for it, but, but in terms of helping for people who don't have an employer mm -hmm. with that plan, that makes sense. Yes. Okay, so um, how did you feel about this last session? I, I highlighted, mm -hmm. I was reading, um, when, something that you would put out that this past year we expanded child care services by cutting business taxes mm -hmm. and we also funded pay raises for licensed providers yes. and that that is important mm -hmm. because um, you know while the cost of daycare is expensive there's a reason and the providers are having trouble with inflation yes. and um, after the pandemic trying to find qualified mm -hmm. people to take care of our kids there's definitely some things that we've done, but we still have a lot of work to do. I mean, there's this is a it, it's becoming a crisis because we haven't paid attention to it for a really long mm -hmm. time, um, and it is one of those vicious circles in a way, though, yeah. because we raise you know uh, the the rates for providers, that in turn can raise the cost for families. But we don't want to see providers who are skilled, who really care about the kids, yeah. and have an enormous amount of training go to work at Target because they can get paid more. Sure. Um, maybe they're treated a little bit better by some family members, mm -hmm. you know, of the, the children. It's it's an unfortunate situation, but we have got to, to pay attention to it because literally it's one of the linchpins of our economy. Yeah. Is no. making sure people can get to work and that people can get to you know expand their own um, experience whether it's their education um, or their their professional life and it's no doubt cyclical and it does mm -hmm. impact in a lot of ways it impacts obviously all parents if you're uh, a dad or a mom but it really does impact a lot of the moms because a lot yes. of the child care does end up the mom staying home because of the cost being too much and so that um, was my it story yeah three, I was home for 13 years with three kids because it there was no way that I could afford to pay for child care and I loved that I was able to be home with my sure. kids but it also meant that I had over a decade of lost income yep um, it is uh, I didn't get those, those pay raises I didn't put into my own retirement mm -hmm. account um, and so what ends up happening is it leaves women specifically um, lower salary lower salaries that and worse financial positions and yeah. really vulnerable during child raising and retirement years right. um, and I always joke that it's a good thing that I like my husband <laughs> as well as love him yes. because I'm pretty tied to his ability to support me right. and, you know as I get older and there are some women who don't have that exactly. and that's when the big 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 problems exactly become. representative Wielander thank you so much for coming on the thank real story you. and talking about the important work that you all are doing thank you so much for having me appreciate it okay well that's gonna do it for us here on the real story if you if you want to watch these segments again, you can head to fox61.com or you can download the Fox 61 app and watch The Real Story every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox 61 or streaming on Fox 61+. Plus. Have a great morning.